Today is Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. I received this word from the Lord at approximately 12, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, we are encouraged, the Bible says, to test every spirit. So that is what I'm going to encourage you to do as well. Take it back to the Lord in your own personal prayer time. Uh, meditate on his holy word. Let him speak to you there and ask him, is this word from you, Lord? And if it is, is it pertaining to me? And if it is, um, what do I need to do next? So that being said, this message is specifically to the body of Christ, my church, those that proclaim my name and declare me as Lord. This is what the Lord said. Did you think you would never suffer anything for my name's sake? Did you think that when you agreed to die to yourself and live for me, you would not have to sacrifice anything? What kind of an offering is that? Shall you bring a half-hearted effort to the altar? Obedience is your greatest sacrifice. Have I not told you to do everything as unto me? So why are you bored and disinterested all of a sudden? Were you expecting something more of me? Have I not met your man-made expectations? It is extremely important that you are walking in my will. But how will you know what that is if you don't seek me for guidance, counsel, and instruction, or even worse, if you chase after the desires of your own heart, thinking that they are mine? Many of you want to hear from me, but are not willing to invest the time fasting and praying. Many of you have become intimidated now that you realize that what I have called you to require stripping you of your idols and preconceived beliefs about yourself and the world. Many of you have no desire to walk through the fiery trials needed to purify your hearts. Many of you become bitter towards, have become, sorry, bitter towards and angry with me when the expectations you created were not being met in the way you would like them to. I did not come and sacrifice my life and pour out my blood to accommodate your preferences. I came to give you life and more abundantly, life with purpose and meaning beyond your desires, wants and needs. I must crucify the selfishness in your heart so you can truly live for me, sacrificing anything I tell you to for the sake of your sanctification and the pleasure of my will. Everything you endure in the refiner's fire is to teach you to stop depending on your own ability and strength, to stop becoming anxious and worried by the things you can see, and to trust rely on and depend on me and not yourself to get you through it my grace is sufficient many of you like jonah are running from the call the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few i have called many but few will be chosen and this is why i have to humble your pride that insists your ways are higher i am el roy the god who sees i am the beginning and the end the author and finisher of your faith. My eyes roll to and fro, fro hold, beholding the evil and the good. I know the thoughts and intents of every heart. So why are you trusting your heart more than me? I do not lie. Whatever I say shall come to pass, and it matters not how or when. You must learn to trust me for what is too hard for me. What is there that I cannot do? Has my arm been shortened? Do you know something that I don't? Shall you teach me great and mighty things that I know not? Your wisdom is futile. It is foolish to me. I use the foolish things to confound the wise. I do as I please. I am God and there is no other. My word never returns to me void. It will always prosper and succeed wherever I send it. The work of your hands will be established by my power, my spirit, and my might. So stop focusing on what you cannot do. 
you can do all things through me. For nothing will be impossible through the Lord your God. I want to share with you the confirmations that I received shortly after this. So I'm going to have you look up the first one. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. It starts with, my grace is sufficient for you. But I want you to read that one for yourself. The next one was Jonah 1.3. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Jonah 1 verse 5. But all this time Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. Just those words. The Lord wanted me to explain that this was during a mighty storm on the sea. I heard him say next, all hands on deck. Jonah chapter 1 verse 6, just these words. How can you sleep at a time like this? Jonah chapter 1 verse 8, just these words. Why has this awful storm come down on us? Jonah chapter 1 verse 8 as well. Just these words. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And I heard the Lord say next, and I have heard their complaints. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise and I will fulfill all my vows for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. The people of Nineveh believed God's message and from the greatest to the least. They declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. Jonah chapter 4 verse 1. Just these words. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah and he became very angry. This is what the Lord said after that. The same way they become bitter because I did not do what was expected. Jonah chapter 4 verse 2 just these words so he complained to the Lord about it the Lord then said I have heard their complaints but where is the thankfulness where is the gratitude where is my praise for all I have done Jonah chapter 4 verse 3 says just kill me now Lord I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen the Lord then said, some of you are despairing of life itself because what you anticipated would happen has not happened. Or how you expected me to move in a situation is completely different from how I answered your prayer. Jonah chapter 4 verse 4. Is it right for you to be angry about this? 1 Samuel chapter 6 verse 10. Just these words. So these instructions were carried out. Then the Lord told me to go to the next page. Samuel chapter 8 verses 6 to 7. This is when the people asked for a king. But Samuel was displeased with their request and went to the Lord for guidance. Do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. I heard the Lord say, they want to rule themselves. The Lord then said, come out of there and go to Deuteronomy. I turned to chapter 31 and the Lord said, stay right where you are. The next confirmation was Deuteronomy 31 verse 21. I know the intentions of these people. Even now, before they have entered the land, I swore to give them. The Lord then said, come out of there and go to Isaiah. I pulled up Isaiah chapter 6 verses 8 to 9. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 11, just these words. Then I said, Lord, how long will this go on? I heard the Lord say, They are getting weary of me. Then I heard the Lord say, Luke. I turn to chapter 1, verses 78 to 79. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness 
and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace.